Hi everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, um, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited you're here with me tonight. My plan today is to talk about, um, well, a quick recap of some substitute teacher lessons that I left in the last week and how it went or not. Oh, <laughs> just going to give you a quick recap of that. And then I want to share my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week with a focus on primary lessons. That's my plan for this week. Um, uh, ooh, just really quick, a technical thing. I changed my mic yet again <laughs> to see if I can get a better sound in this video. So Facebook, especially if you're listening on Facebook, um, could you tell me, can you hear me? I guess if you can't, I should maybe hold up a, like a piece of paper that says like Facebook, can you hear me? Uh, but anyway, if you, can, if you can't hear me, please let me know. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you're like, um, anyway, I <laughs> hope you can hear me. So a couple quick things. Um, if, you, uh, if you hear me mention like a worksheet, a book, a game, something that you are excited about and you hear it in this video um, and I mention it's on the links page, the, um, there's a links there's a page on my blog dedicated to all the links, all the resources, all the everything that I talk about in these videos. You can find it if you go to my website and you search under the, the videos tab, or if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, you can just click my link at the bottom of the, the um, description for this video. Uh, Instagram, it's in my LinkedIn profile. <clears throat> and that's for my links for the stuff I talk about on in the links page. Um, one more thing, if you wanna join, if you're on Facebook, you wanna join my Facebook group. It's called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, we bounce ideas of each other we ask questions um there are some great conversations happening there so please come and join us okay and and one more thing one more thing and then i'm going to be done talking about this like uh the housekeeping stuff um i was so excited to be able to share last weekend um with folks at uh the north atlantic conference the um uh, uh can't atlantic regional conference <laughs> I think is what the overarching organization was. It's folks in uh, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia and Labrador and um, Prince Edward Island and there's a whole bunch of music teachers uh, in Canada. I was able to share last week and it was so much fun. It was super exciting. Um, I'm gonna be sharing a couple more times in the coming weeks. I'll be at the American Orf Shulvrook Association National Conference. So if you're there, I hope that you have signed up for my session or um, if you haven't signed up for my session, you can also come to my evening session, which is unticketed, it's an evening event. Um, that's on Friday night. So if you're there, I'd love to see you at AOSA. Come up, say hi. Let's chat. Um, I'm also going to be at the Nebraska Music Educators Association, which I'm so excited because that's my home state where I grew up. Um, that's uh, November 17th and 18th. Um, so if you're going to be at Nebraska MEA, woohoo! Let's talk and like have a runs or something. And then uh, if you don't know what that is, you're not from Nebraska. It's fine. Um, and then December 6th, I'm doing a, a live. Um, Virtual PD through Music Construct Ed, um, and there are details about that on my on my website, or you can look it up. But that's December sixth. Um, I know it's a Monday night. <laughs> I won't be doing a musical Monday that night, but um, it's going to be so much fun, and it's going to be about uh, lessons based on children's books, and that's through Music Construct Ed. You can go and find the links to that and all the other uh, stuff I'm talking about on my website, MakeMomentsMatter.org. Okay, cool. So let me tell you about, so as I just said, I did this uh, online workshop for um, Newfoundland and Labrador and um, other regional provinces and local music ed groups this last weekend. Um, but that meant that I had to take Friday off, so I was able to do that, and um, I had to leave sub plans. So let's talk about how they went. Um, so this morning I got to school, and like, you know, I'd left my like normal, all the sub stuff that I normally do. And I got to school and I was like looking at what the sub left me as a note. And so I'll just say that like whenever I leave stuff for a sub, I leave, almost, I don't know where I put it, I just had it a second ago. Um, I leave um, this like substitute teacher thing. Of course, I just was like, I'm gonna talk about it so I can't find it. I can't find it. Um, it's this freebie I have. Oh, here it is. It's this freebie I have in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, but um, it's like a little substitute report. And basically it goes through and is like, it gets the, the substitute's name and phone number in case I need to check in with them. And then it has a spot for each grade level, K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where like they can just like give me a quick blurb about how things went. 
Um, and then there's a thing that says, next time I'd appreciate the following, like in case the uh, the person who's uh, my substitute for the day is like, you know what, it'd be really nice to have this thing recorded or I'd rather have a book or I'd rather have, you know, whatever. Like that's good to have because I, I'm always trying to make my substitute teacher lessons better for both my students and the sub and me. Um, and then on the back, it says discipline or behavior issues in case there's a kid who has a problem, uh, what the problem would be. And then I think it says like, leave the name of any helpful students who should like get rewarded for doing super extra great work. Um, and then the, this sub didn't do it, but there's a little thing that says like checks like, I am a music person, comfortable teaching music content or singing. And then I am not a music person and prefer videos or worksheets. That's always helpful to know because if the sub was like so good, amazing, great with classroom management, ready to use some kids, but they're like, I don't do singing. I would like that sub to come back. You know, like if they did a really super great job and like everything went well, I didn't get a phone call saying like, oh my God, where's the remote for blah, blah, blah. Like if they made it work and like the, the lessons went okay, I want them to come back. And so asking them like, what would you prefer? <laughs> like that's sort of helpful. Because if it's just a shot in the dark of like, well, I hope these plans work like that, you know, sometimes that works, but it's good to know if like they think the content is good and they can handle it. So I put that all in the substitute report and I, I'll, well, and then, so I got the sub notes from them and then I went through and was like, oh, you didn't do this thing. Oh, you didn't do this thing. And then, mm, okay. And so I was like quickly reading that and then I had to go do crosswalk duty. So this morning I'm standing at crosswalk duty, like thinking about it. I'm like slightly annoyed. I'm like, why didn't I do blah, blah, blah. And then I just had to stop and remind myself like two things. One, in your lessons, David, you give the sub option after option after option. You say like, you could do this. If you have extra time, you could do this. If you'd rather, you could do this. There are also these backup DVDs, also these worksheets, also these books. Also, like I give lots and lots of options because, you know, if I were a sub, I've never subbed, but if I were a sub, I would imagine like there would be things where I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'm really comfortable with blah, blah, blah. It, I mean, even if I'm thinking like, classroom content like math or reading or whatever and you know like these subs like you never know if you're going to get someone who's like oh yeah i'm comfortable with xyz and so i i want to give them options of like if you're more comfortable doing this great if you're more comfortable doing this great so i, I had to remind myself as i'm standing this morning like you gave them options they took the options they didn't like completely deviate and say like we just watched youtube so <laughs> like that's positive, right? And then the other thing I had to remind myself was like, okay, you know, 30, when you're 30 years in, I'm like a third of the way there, right? So like, if, if you're like, if I've made it to the end of my career, am I, am I ever going to go like, well, David, what a great career, except <laughs> sub plans on October 22nd, <laughs> 2021. Wow, what a fail moment. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it. I don't think that sub plans are even gonna, fa I, when I'm like looking back on my career, I don't think sub plans are even gonna factor in to like my thoughts about how <laughs> like my life's work went. I, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna like sit around with colleagues and be like, ha ha, let me tell you the story about this sub who like didn't do exactly what, no, I, I'm not gonna think that. Um, <laughs> okay, that said. There's maybe one or two stories where the sub like went way off the rails. I might think about that. Or the one <laughs> time I came back and my substitute report just said, good kids did the limbo. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I, I had a morning duty that day too. This was years and years and years ago. And I went out and I asked one of my fourth graders, I was like, hey, like a fourth grader who I knew I could like pretty much get a good report from. Hey, what did y'all do yesterday? And she was like, oh, um, in music, uh, we did the limbo. And I was like, the whole time? She's like, yeah, the whole time. Okay, so I find a second grader. I say, hey, what did y'all do yesterday? We did the limbo. The whole time? The whole time. Okay. <laughs> so this uh, uh, first, first I'm thinking like, wh what music did they use? And then I was like, where did you even get a limbo stick? Did they like use like a boom whacker? Or like, did you bring your own limbo stick? Like... Who held the limbo stick? I don't know. It was just all these questions. So anyway, I mean, unless the sub goes that far off the rails, I just remind myself, like, you had a day off, and it's fine. And the sub mostly followed your plans. Don't stress. 
And I think we do stress as teachers, I know I'm not the only one, I think we do stress because we put so much work into these sub plans and then to like have the sub do something else. We just need to remember that like the sub is walking in and maybe sometimes they pull them like 10 minutes before kids walk in. Or maybe they're trying to scan through, you know, and don't know exactly what. So it's like I could super, super, super stress out about it or I could just be like, eh. I'm glad the room isn't on fire or ne was never on fire. You know, like I just have to think like, it's fine. They were sub plans. Just chill. And actually, I think the sub did a pretty good job. I, I was being fussy about like, why didn't they do this one thing? Okay, I'll tell you why in a second. So let me just give you a quick rundown of what I had the sub do. So you can like think like, oh, I might want to do something like that. Or maybe not in my own classroom. Okay, kindergarten. Um, I told the sub, what did I tell them? Okay, I said there's a book read aloud I've already done on the substitute teacher flash drive because I have one flash drive that just has like a lot of resources like books and um, read alouds and stuff that they can just click and play, right? Okay, I said we did, I, you could do Before John Was a Jazz Giant. Cool book, that'd be great. Didn't do that, okay? <laughs> and then I said you could watch this DVD that I have of Reading Rainbow that does um, Hip Cat, which is a, a, another cool book. And I was like, you could do just the book part or you could do the whole thing. Cause it's all sort of like music and jazz themed. Cool. Um, so that's what, that's what I did. Awesome. Also what I left for them was, um, uh, I also left these um, coloring pages in case they wanted, because I know some teeth, like, again, I, I wanna make it easy for a sub. I want them to have options of like what they're comfortable with. So I leave a book that they can read usually. Um, I have a read aloud version of the book uh, or of another book. So in case they're like, I don't want to read this out loud, I would rather project up one that's already done. Okay, so I have a pre-recorded one of me doing that on a flash drive. Cool. I usually also leave like a DVD if they want. Mm -hmm. And then I have usually coloring or a worksheet or something, depending on the grade. Kindergarten, it's usually coloring. And since my classes are 30 minutes, I know they can handle it. So for my kindergarten coloring, I have these. Okay, this is not a kindergartner's work. That I originally made this as a bulletin board, as like an alphabet, an, an instrument alphabet. So alligator playing accordion and bear playing banjo and cat playing castanets, right? So like that's like a bulletin board you could print out. But as I was making it, I was like, why don't I do a black and white version? This is in case people want to like print it on colored paper, right? But then this is also, I was like, oh, the kids could use this as a coloring page. So this is like a coloring page of like kids with the animal right that they can take and color and yeah so anyway um it's it's super cool and then the kid can choose a letter and the kindergarten's learning letters anyway so like they're excited about that and then they get an animal playing a thing and it's anyway hilarious so this is um it's something that i usually leave for kids it's one of the options again if it, if a sub is like i want to read this book or i want to play this game or i want to you know i want to give them the options coloring is an easy option and it's on theme so fine <laughs> but anyway, they, the sub opted did not to do it this time. Totally fine. Anyway, these are on the links page in case you're interested to, to see more about that. Okay, first grade, uh, she did not say what they did. I sort of, I sort of sussed out from what I left and what she had, had completed. I sort of figured out what they did. Um, so I said, we just did, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly like a couple weeks ago. So... Um, here are five other books that are old lady who swallowed a fly. Like there's, you know, and I've shown these in the last week. Um, there's the ones that are like, uh, the old lady who, uh, swallowed a bat and whatever, and all the, like the scholastic version. Then there are the ones that it's like, uh, the, the Caldecott winner. And then there's uh, another, you know, there's, I showed one a couple weeks ago that was a dragon who swallowed a knight. Ooh, there's one more I forgot. That I did, that I forgot to show this one. There was an old giant who swallowed a clock. This is another cutout one. Well, at least part of it is. And it's a super fun one. Um, he swallows the clock, and then he swallows some knitting, and he swallows some honey. This is another silly one um, that I just found out last year, so I thought I'd throw that in there. Anyway, I left several of these because I was like, hey, we just read this book, so here are three, you know, other variations if you want to look at. And then I also did, um, there was a shy fellow who swallowed a cello. 
And I left that. And then I, again, left coloring pages because I was like, if you're going to do Shy Fellow that swallowed a cello, this is like a perfect connection. And we're also talking about instruments and whatever. So these coloring pages are different, though. They're not the the animal playing the instrument. This one has like a the instrument just by itself. And then it says like French horn. And below it says, I'm easy to spot because all my tubes wrap together and I make a circular shape. Sometimes I'm just called the horn. And then this, this set of worksheets has like traditional orchestral and it has like classroom instruments like kibasa and woodblock and whatever and it also has like glockenspiel xylophone metallophone so again options for the sub in case they want to add the coloring page and again in 30 minutes read a book do some coloring you're basically out of time so i wanted to give them options and then i also left a, a youtube video that was like, like a link to the video that was like a go dance or get dancing or just dance or whatever. I don't know. There were like so many variations of those things, like a brain break sort of a thing, just as an option for them. Second grade, I left on my substitute teacher flash drive. Um, I left um, a PowerPoint that I got years ago on Teachers Pay Teachers from Sarah Bybee, and it was Carnival of the Animals. It's so well done because the PowerPoint is like, it introduces each character. It talks about the instrument that plays it. It talks about... Uh, the, the the type of piece and all of that. And then um, it also gives links to sound bites online and stuff. It's just brilliant. In fact, it's like too long. It's too thorough. <laughs> like there's so much on it. And so I like delete out pages that I'm like, don't do, you know, like I, I, I don't like delete them, but like I move them way to the end. So that like the sub doesn't like, cause otherwise they could just read through and it would take forever. So I usually say like do a couple of instruments or read through the whole thing. I don't care. That's an option for them if they want. And then I also have links to um, a YouTube video that I found that's like um, Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny introducing Carnival of the Animals. So another sort of like option, 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 if you want. If you want. You might have noticed so far that I have no like, sub, you must do a, you must sing this game and do this singing game because I, I didn't know if this sub was a singer or not, so I'm not going to like put that in there and be like, please do this first. I honestly don't care. I mean, if they're, it, again, low bar, if they're like, kids didn't break any bones and nobody peed on the carpet or too, too much, I don't know, you know like, whatever. So I, I, I don't ever push that. If it were like a parental leave or something where I know I'm going to be gone a super long time, yes, I would push the, the content. But if it's for one day, I still stress out about it. Okay, third grade, uh, so, okay, this is interesting. So <laughs> third grade, I had um, Remarkable Farkle McBride, super fun book, got this years ago, right? Comes with, um, mine came with a CD that like the, the author, John Lithgow, reading the book, cool. That takes a while. So she must have opted not to read that because that takes a while. And she has other things listed in here, but okay. Um, and th so then I also bought from Pitch Publications on Teachers Pay Teachers a couple years ago. I bought the like um, uh, like worksheets that go with it. There's one about, there's just coloring one. There's one that's like, um, ooh, where did I put them? Um, yeah, so there's one that's just coloring. There's one that's um, uh, circle the instrument's your favorite part. If I change my mind about the instrument, what would I do instead? Usually, usually most of my students say like, I'd sell it. I'd sell the instrument. If you don't know, Remarkable Farkle McBride, it's a cute book. I never use it in class. I always use it for sub lessons. I don't personally use the book. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I just know that it's such an easy lesson to put into a sub lesson that I'm like, I'm not going to try and use this in class. I'm just let the sub use it. Um, then there's like a worksheet that's matching uh, like the instrument to its name. There's one that's um, like write out the name of the instrument. So it's sort of easy to differentiate this worksheet pack if you're doing it for different grades. Again, this is from Pitch Publications. That's Shelly Tomich, if you know her on Teachers Pay Teachers. She, totally worth it. I bought this set like six years ago. I probably used it every year for like hundreds of kids. It's, it's totally worth it. Just buy the book, buy her worksheet. It's so worth it. But then I, I, as a backup, I said, you can watch Blast on DVD. And she ended up watching a different DVD with a different class, but the one for this one didn't work. So I don't know if I need to like check that the DVD player's not working or check to see if the disc isn't working, but I thought it was. Anyway, whatever. But she was like, didn't watch, tried to watch Blast, couldn't do it, found it on YouTube. So I was like, how does she do that if she did all the remarkable Farkle McBride? Like, 
did they extend my classes like that? I'm just trying to think like timing, like how in the world did you get to the DVD? But okay, fine. <laughs> anyway, um, cause I'm just thinking the timing, you wouldn't have time to do that, but she, I don't know. God bless. Um, again, she was there. The classes liked it. We're fine. Uh, fourth grade. Okay. This is another <laughs> those times where I was, this is why I was like, why didn't she do this thing? I said, and that she did this other thing instead. Why? Um, okay. So this, I have this book. Uh, my name is Celia. My name is Celia. Life of Celia Cruz. And this is by uh, Monica Brown, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Beautiful book. Love it. Um, last year, I made this set of worksheets um, that goes along with it just to sort of extend the lesson. There's a PowerPoint that goes with it. It explains Celia Cruz's life. It has links to videos of her performing online. There are worksheets if you want them that are like, this one goes through and like has kids actually come up with the details of her life. So the question's like, Celia is known as the queen of what? Jazz, salsa, rock and roll, blues. Celia is born on the island of what? Cuba, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Bermuda. And so it's like they actually have to know the information in the book to fill that out. There's one page that's just coloring. If you, again, are using it for a younger grade or you just want them to color, okay. There's another one of just coloring. This one's my favorite. Okay. Uh, uh, Celia is inspired by the island of Cuba, the culture, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what are your influences? That's fun. And then it says, like, name a few things from your life that would influence any music that you might create. This could be something to do, food, you like to eat, books, TV shows, See, several things. Uh, Celia shouted, Azucar, when she was on stage. What would your catchphrase be? This is hilarious when kids actually fill it out. Love it. Anyway, so this is, like, stuff that, oh, and then there's, like, a write a quick synopsis of the book. Or So, anyway, this is stuff that kids can do. But, like I said, the, the set that I made also comes with, like, a PowerPoint that tells about Celia's life, links to... Um, videos about her life online, stuff like that, to extend the book in case you want. Um, so anyway, that's there. But in the sub notes, she writes, they were both great classes. They'd read this book before. And then they didn't do any of the worksheets. So I was like, okay, what? <laughs> this is when I'm like, never trust a kid to tell you something that they remember. Because kids all the time are like, hey, you remember this from last week? No, I don't remember anything. And then I'm like, ooh, you remember this one other thing? No, but I do remember a very tiny obscure fact from when I was in kindergarten, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, I, if a kid is like, oh, we've read this before. I'm like, okay, but what does that mean? Yes, we read this last year in class, but we only read it. We didn't do any of the worksheets. We didn't do any of the like extra stuff. So like, this was still a viable substitute option. Anyway, again, the room was fine, didn't burn down, no big deal. Anyway, but she did one of my other options, great. I'm, I'm honestly just fine with that. But yeah, so these worksheets and things, they're on my Teachers Pay Teachers store. The link to this is on the links page in case you're interested. Okay, um, oh, and, and so I did that, the, the stuff that you saw, the set that you saw with like the worksheets and the PowerPoint and all that. Like I did that for this book and for two others, and I'm trying to do it for a couple more. The other books I did was um, Ella Queen of Jazz and... Uh, the one about uh, Debussy, or uh, no, sorry, not Debussy, one about uh, Rhapsody in Blue, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, doesn't matter. Anyway, um, but that's that's why I left. So I was like, well, substitute teacher, why did you listen to these fourth graders? They know nothing. <laughs> anyway, oh, another point of like, don't trust. Um, <laughs> I had a, a kindergartner like two weeks ago who was like, our teacher's going to be gone for three weeks. And I was like, oh, is she okay? And he's like, oh yeah, no, she's fine. She's just gonna be gone for three weeks. And I was like, wait, three weeks? Or three days? Or three hours? <laughs> like, that just... And he was like, no, three weeks. Very... And this is one of my super smart kids. So I was like, okay. So no, it was three days, including a weekend. So like she was like off on a Friday. It was like... <laughs> anyway, God bless. So uh, sweet kid. And then um, so just don't... Substitute, I should write my substitute plans. Do not trust the students. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But anyway, just whatever. It was fine. But I, that means that I can reuse these worksheets for next time. So no problem. Already printed. There we go. And the last thing is this. Um, this is from Making Music, which is just a, a music teacher curriculum. And it's new activities for the substitute teacher. I know I've shared about this one before, but um, I always try and do either their America the Beautiful lesson or their 50 Nifty United States or... Um, there's one on God Bless America. This is for fifth grade where it has them compare and contrast. Well, it's, they have to talk about a patriotic song and all that first, which is great. 
And then there's a version where like they have to compare and contrast a couple different versions. That's cool. Um, these worksheets are pretty good, but I don't do, there, there are a lot of lessons in here I don't do because I just like, mm. but the nice thing about these lessons um, is that um, they are written in a way that a substitute teacher who's never done music, they're written for that person. So like a substitute teacher who walks into a, like a regular ed classroom who like is used to seeing reading in ELA and, and math and whatever, it is laid out the exact way that they are used to seeing it. So like, even if they're like, I don't feel good about the content, they are totally gonna be fine with the format. They're gonna understand how it works because it looks like everything else they did because it's also published by Pearson. So anyway, if you have um, a curriculum that's new-ish, like last 10 or 15 years, you might have a book like this. If you don't have this specific book, you can usually find it on like a music teacher buy, sell, trade or whatever, like a, a Facebook group. This is, I use like probably five or six lessons out of here. But my school has that curriculum, so I just like, boop, you know, use it. But if you don't have it, then, I mean, there are, there are lots of other things you can do. And like, it, like I said, I just went through my kindergarten through fifth grade, and I only used it for one grade. But I used it for the one grade, and it makes my life easier, so. And and if it if it bombs, and my principal, <laughs> it's not going to, it's a fine lesson. But if my principal calls me into the office and is like, what kind of lesson do you need? I was like, the one supplied to me by the district. That's what I'm, <laughs> so like, I'm never going to get any, not, I've never gotten pushback about those lessons, but just in case, that's nice to have. Okay, I know we're going to run out of time, so I'm going to focus on primary grades today, and I want to share just a little bit about that, which is good, because guess what, fourth grade and fifth grade are planning for a program, so like, me talking about those lessons would not be very exciting. So I'm going to talk about my lessons for week nine for, um, and I know this is week 10, Musical Mondays, but week nine of my lessons, I'm going to share about kindergarten first and second as much as I can, and then if we can hit third grade, cool. Okay, my lessons are 30 minutes. I see them twice a week, so I'm gonna share both my first and second lesson of the week, so you can like see the progression of one to the next. Kindergarten comes in, and we do the poem that probably many of you know called Johnny Works With One Hammer. Um, we're eventually gonna sing it, but right now we're just doing, um, just like, it's it's like practice for steady beat. So uh, the poem goes, Johnny works with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Johnny works with one hammer, Johnny. Then he works with two. But the way I introduce it, as I say, there's this little boy and he's trying to build something and I'm not exactly sure what it is, <clears throat> but it doesn't really matter, he's just building. But he has the wood and he has the nails and he needs that thing that you use to like put nails into boards and wood and stuff. What's that called? It's called, a, ooh, a hammer, right. And he gets a hammer because he's got a lot of work to do. And so can you take the hammer and bounce the hammer on your knee um, or like, you know, hit on your knee while we're while I'm saying the poem? It goes, Johnny works with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Johnny works with one hammer. Johnny works with one. The when I'm introducing it, that's how I start. And I go, oh, great. Except you know what Johnny said, I'm never gonna get the work done like this. There's too much to do. So he went and he found a second hammer. He's got one in this hand and one in this hand. And then he goes, Johnny works with two hammers, two hammers, two hammers. Johnny works with two hammers. Johnny works with two. And he does that for a while and he goes, okay, but I'm not gonna get everything done. There's no way I can get everything done. There's too much to do. So he goes and he finds Another hammer. We had two. We got another one. How many is that? Three hammers. Oh my gosh, what's happening? How's he even going to hold them? Because he only have two hands, like one in this hand, one in this hand. I he's going to have to tie one to his shoe. So he leaned down and pretend. We're sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor right now, so this works out just fine. So we like lean back and we have to do one hand, one hand, and one foot all together at the same time. Johnny works with three hammers, three hammers, three hammers. Johnny works with three hammers. Johnny works with three. But then he gets worried because I'm never going to get us all that. So we go through until we get to five. So like hand, hand, foot, foot, and then one on your head. And on five, then we do Johnny works with five hammers, five hammers, five hammers. Johnny works with five hammers. Then he takes a break because he got too tired. And so we like lay down and go like, but guess what? We're never going to get the work done if we're just taking a break the whole time. we got to start back over with one hammer. The work seems to be going okay, so let's do And so this time then we do uh, like a progressive thing where it goes, Johnny works with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Johnny works with one hammer. Then he works with 
two because they already know the progression. So like going back instead of saying like Johnny works with one. Oh no, we gotta add more. So I don't need to add those little storytelling tidbits in between the two parts. I can just say, then he works with two. And the second time we'll go, Johnny works with two hammers, two hammers, two hammers. Johnny works with two hammers. Then he works with three. So we just keep adding up, right? And so then um, once we get to five, we go, then he takes a break and he fall, you know, fall over. And then the last, we do it one last time. So we do it three times. And really they're like sort of done with the story by then. But I say this time, I need you to stand up. So then doing it standing up is more difficult, right? So then, so they do one hammer, two hammers, uh, three, four, and then they're jumping on four because they have to use both, hand, both hands and both feet. And then five is, uh, I mean, that's really crazy. So we do that. We have a great time. We um, sing hello to each other. Hello, students. Hello, Mr. Rowe. Hello, Janice. Hello, Mr. Rowe. We've been doing that weeks and weeks and weeks. And then we do five little pumpkins. So in the previous week, we learned the poem, the one that goes, five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. <sighs> went the wind and out went the lights and five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Okay, that's the whole thing. We learned that in the previous week. This should be a reminder. <laughs> they should know it. So I shouldn't have to like, let's learn this again. But like I do it one time as like a practice. Okay, so then... On the floor, I have, well, I actually say, you know what? I've got this special pumpkin microphone. Ooh, check it out. It's not really a microphone. It is an old tube that, like, came from one of those, you know, like, you get, like, candy that's, like, Hershey's Kisses, but, like, it has a little pumpkin on the top so they can, like, raise the price of the kisses because it's, like, Halloween-themed, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, this was one of those at one time. Obviously, I ate all the candy. And then I, like, wrapped the top with tape. I don't remember exactly what I made it for originally, but now it's my pumpkin microphone. So I hold it like this and I talk into it like it's a pumpkin microphone. And I say, what if, what if I use my microphone? Because, you know, a microphone is there to make your voice louder. What if I use the microphone to give someone a solo? Ooh. Okay, watch this. If I did, it'd go like this. The first one said, and then I put the microphone in front of a kid's mouth. And that kid almost always will instinctually go, Oh my, it's getting late. And all the other kids get quiet. And this ha didn't fail me this year, but like I put it down and that, that one kid says it by themselves and everyone else is like, oh, the pumpkin microphone, it's for solos, right? And so I go, the second one said, and I put it in front of another kid. There are witches in the... The third one said, but we don't care. And I go through and do the five different parts like that to sort of preview that like each kid's going to get to say one by themselves. So I say, okay, great, but you know what? Let's make this even more exciting. Let's make this even more dramatic. Okay, here's, I have this idea, hold on. So then I have this little like pumpkin um, trick or treat ba basket thing. Okay, and so inside I have a couple things. One, I just have a rope. It's not very long. It's like thin, like, it's really like crafting rope. Anyway, whatever. I have a little bit of rope. I lay it down on the ground. That becomes one gate. I lay one down on the other side of the room. That becomes the other gate. Um, so like, well, you'll see in a second. And then I have kids sort of like move to the edge of the room and I start pulling out pumpkins. One pumpkin. Is that enough for our poem? No. Two pumpkins. Is that enough for our poem? Not enough. Okay. Three. Is that enough? No. Okay. Four. That enough? No. Five. I need to add another one. Okay. Five. Good. Is that enough? Oh, wait, but I got another one. Six. Oh, I need to take one away. Okay. Sorry. Um, I, I, I do that just so that, like, because kindergarten are getting used to counting and, like, counting up and whatever and adding in. And so I, I do the, like, add one, uh, uh, add one, take away, whatever, just so it, like, uses their language, but also, like, makes them think about math stuff. Anyway, so then each, then five kids get one of these little foam pumpkins, which these I, like, bought probably 10 years ago. 
And every once in a while, a kid will be like, oh, no, I ripped one. Or they're terrible and they do rip it on purpose or what? Or, you know, I don't know. Or someone will be like, hold it too tight and they'll smush it, whatever. I got a pack of like 50 10 years ago. I think I got my money's worth. So I just throw it away and get a new one. Anyway, so like these are not important. You could use anything. You could use a die cut one. You could use a post-it note. It doesn't matter. But it's just to signify like the five kids. So if you get a little pumpkin, you get to go sit on one of the ropes, the gates. And I'm like, ooh, look at this huge, amazing gate I'm building. Ooh, it's a rope. And I'm like, we gotta pretend. Okay, so we pretend. Anyway, so they go and say, they sit on the gate. And then I say like, you know what? The pumpkin microphone would be good, but I don't think it's gonna be good enough. I think I'm gonna need to get a real microphone. <gasps> ooh, so like I have some handhelds in my room and they connect up to my like speaker set in my room. And actually they're, they're not great. And they... <laughs> <laughs> they have like this weird reverb on them. So it does actually sound sort of spooky. So it's like hilarious. But anyway, so then the kids who are sitting on the gate, the five kids, they get to go through and each one says one of the five parts. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late into like the actual microphone. And the kids love it. And usually if like the first one goes and it's a little timid, I'll, I'll be like super over the top. Be like, <gasps> wow. And then all the other kids like, we're sold. We're doing it. You know, like you just have to sell it to them, but they'll go for it. So they say it in the microphone. They're all about it. And then we act it out. So like they sit, they say the part. And then at the end, um, went the wind and out went the lights and five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. And here's where that sells the, the, the cincher, the whatever, the cell for the lesson. They get to roll from one end to the other. Oh my God, they love it. Every kid wants to go. Um, every kid gets a chance. Usually I get down to the end and there'll be like two kids left over, but I have to have five little pumpkins, right? So I pull out five of these foam pumpkins and I give away the two and I'm like, oh no, but I need three more pumpkins. I guess I'm gonna have to choose from the pumpkins who've already gone. I have to choose three pumpkins doing like a super duper amazing job and they're gonna have to, they're gonna get to go again. And so then like three kids get to go again. Anyway, amazing. One of my favorite lessons of the year the kids like it for the most part, and I could use a microphone. And there's a solo, and it's so it's so much fun. Anyway, so totally worth it. I might have written a blog post about it. I did. I did write a blog post about it. I'll link that on the links page. I will remember. Okay, then day two of kindergarten. So much happened in day one. What a great day. Day two in kindergarten, we do Johnny working with one hammer again. It, but this time to make it more exciting, the first time we do it normal, the second time um, we uh, do it uh, a little bit faster. I'm like, oh no, we're in a rush, we're in a rush. And then the third time, um, I, I, you know, so like we get to five hammer Johnny, work with five hammers, then he takes our rest. I'm like, I'm too tired to possibly do this again. So I'm like laying on the ground and I go, Johnny work with well I stay laying down and I just like do it while laying down and they all giggle and think that's hilarious so then we do the whole thing we get to the fifth hammer because like how do you do like two hands and two feet and laying down how do you do your head I'm like I am not like one kid one class was like you gotta use your head I was like I am not banging my head against the floor in slow motion with this silly poem and have a headache for the rest of the day so I was like oh no can't use our head I guess I have to use our bottom and so <laughs> we did that it was hilarious the uncoordinated crazy like trying to like we looked like fish flopping around the floor obviously the kids loved it it was great <laughs> so um that was a fun version uh so then we go and find our our seating chart spots um we do our singing voice where we sing hello back and forth to each other and i say oh, you know what i just love singing so much sometimes i forget that i should be speaking instead of singing like the other day i was in the hallway and someone said hi mr ron i went hello student and then they were like why are you singing i was like why not sing singing is fun and then i was at the grocery store the other day and someone said it's 42.95 and i went here's my credit card charge the card give me another almond joy or whatever i don't remember what i said at the grocery store and the kids are like why are you singing i was like i just love singing so sometimes i sing it's fun to sing and then i did something else some other scenario where like i use my singing voice and they thought it was funny anyway so we talk it's talking about singing voice and speaking voice and then i show them this video from disney's enchanted 
which they're making an Enchanted 2. How exciting. Amy Adams is like the princess. And then there's like Nick Dreamy or whatever from Grey's Anatomy, if you're interested in, I don't remember. I've never, I've, I only watched like seven seasons of Grey's Anatomy and it's like in the 45th season right now. So, um, and as Patrick Dempsey, oh, that's him. That's him. And James Marsden. And Adina, Adina Menzel. She's like hardly even mentioned. She's not even on the cover. Can you believe that? And Susan Sarandon. Anyway, so, um, so it, there's a part in here. It's called, uh, that's how you know. That's how you know he loves you. Um, and it's this cute little thing where she like breaks into the song in the park. And Patrick Dempsey's like, don't sing. Why are you singing? You don't sing. And then other people start singing with her. And then it turns into this big, like, you know, Disney princess scene. Hilarious. But it is great for showing singing voice and just singing anywhere. And like, see, and they're like, but it's her singing that brought everyone to life in the park. They're so excited. Yeah. So anyway, kids like it. It's fun. Um, it's a short little thing. I bought the DVD years ago because I just wanted like a high res nice version of it. And now I'm sure it's in like the bargain bin. You could probably buy it for like a dollar because... DVDs who's buying them but I have a DVD player in my room so I use it there's also I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube I put that on the links page um, if you're interested and then we talk about how in the video she calls to the animals and the animals come to help her and I say I tried to do that the other day I tried to call to the animals like a Disney princess ah 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 and and then the, the animals came but they weren't very helpful because I wanted them to do a steady beat and they just couldn't do it and I, de I demonstrate like steady beat steady beat steady moose moose you're getting too fast that's not a steady beat my goodness oh and then i and i pulled out this um uh, snow leopard no i don't know what this is um white tiger i can't tell the beanie version what is this anyway whatever so this striped thing um i tried to do steady beat and it slowed down and then this last one this anteater i tried to have it do, it do a steady beat steady beat steady beat and it went bum 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 not a steady beat oh my goodness so instead of help them helping me i think we're gonna have to help them and so i hand out little beat beanie buddies to all the kids and we do like you know we do steady beat we uh we show them we have them sit and watch us while we do a steady beat and then we hold them we pat them like a steady beat we give them a pat on the head and a steady beat not a hard one we're not smacking they think that's hilarious. Oh, don't do that. They track. And then we just get a nice pat. We let them jump. We jump from one knee to the next. Or sometimes we'll let them jump on our head. I don't know. But it's just like 12 different ways to like practice steady beat with our little beat beanie buddies. It gives them something physical to move. It's a little bit more exciting than just doing the steady beat and they like it. So anyway, that then we run out of time. But that's what if I, my kindergarten lessons this week. I just like doing them. I think that's a good sign when you like the content you're teaching. Even if I, I probably taught these things for many years. It's just nice when you like get to a lesson and you're like, I really like these ones. They always go well. The kids like them. They seem to understand things. Like that's such a good feeling. Anyway. Um, okay. So first grade. They came in. And last week I think I sang them this song. But this week. Oh no. It was, it was this. It was this week that I started. I said, you know, the other day, uh, I was sitting here teaching a class, and um, I don't. Was, somebody came to the door, and they must have forgotten that my door is just unlocked; that they can just push it open and get in. But um, all I heard was this little like tap, tap, tap at the window right next to my door, and then I heard knock, 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 knock on the door, and I went and I opened it, and I was like, the door is unlocked. They're like, oh, sorry, I just came to um, remind you about blah blah blah, or I came to ask, or I left my water bottle in here. I don't know. I make up a story. And I said, okay, well, so then five minutes later, somebody else came and they tap, tap, tapped. And they knocked, knocked, knocked. And I went, who's that tapping in the window? Who's that knocking at the door? Don't they know they could just come in? And actually, I have a song about it. It goes, Who, who's that tapping at the window? Who's that knocking at the door? Who could it be? Guess what? It was Brayden. So now I'm going to add into my song. Brayden's tapping at the window. Brayden's knocking at the door. And then, uh, so I went and I helped Brayden, right? And then five minutes later, guess what? Tap, tap, tap. Knock, knock, knock. And I was like, 
Who's that tapping at the window? Who's that knocking at the door? I couldn't believe it. Someone was still there. And so anyway, I went and I looked. And it was um, uh, Anna. And I so I went, Anna's tapping at the window. Anna's knocking at the door. And I don't know, she was there to, it was her birthday, I think. So she was there to give me a cupcake or something. And um, I was like, well, thanks, Anna. I got to get back to my class. You know, so. And then five minutes later, guess what? Tap, tap, tap. Knock, knock, knock. And you know who it was? No, I'm asking. I don't remember who it was. Do you think you know who maybe it was? And then I let kids come up with names. And sometimes they'll choose a brother or a sister. Or they'll choose somebody else in the room. They'll choose some other name, a friend. Sometimes they'll choose someone in the room, which, fine, we'll sing that. And so we, we, they sing it along. There's the part that goes, who's that tapping the window? Who's that knocking the door? Then the, the whoever they choose, right? And so um, we do that. And then um, it, we go around. We try some different things. And that's like the beginning. That's the start. But we do many examples. So that, like by the time we like, we'll finish a verse, I'll go, and then guess what? Five minutes later, they're like, oh, my goodness, another person interrupting your lesson again. I'm like, I know. Can you believe it? Um, so any, <laughs> anyway, I guess it also teaches them like, hey, my door's unlocked. Just push it open. You don't need to like stand and tap. I don't know. Kids do that sometimes. So then um, in the previous lesson, we read the book. Um, there was a, uh, the little old lady who was not afraid of anything. And we just did um, actions for the different um, the different characters that she meets, the different parts of the story. So the, the shoes that stomp and the pants that wiggle and the shirt that shakes and the gloves that clap and the hat that nods and the pumpkin head that goes boo so this time we add instruments and we try and find one that matches like ish sort of with each thing so what i did to see either match the sound or sort of the movement or something i pre-select a couple so like the boo at the end the pumpkin i have tubanos and djembe's that are like big sounds um, i always try and work in uh, hand drums and uh, for this one i try and do hand drums and I'll do, because there are a couple that like shake and wiggle. So I'll throw the wiggles. I do usually like some sort of jingle bell or something. Um, and then I have like a, a couple shakers in there. And then there's like, I try and I try and bring in something with a mount. So I try and bring like a wood block or a tone block. And then, um, oh, well, there's like a tambourine for the hat. Anyway, I give kids a couple options. I, I like play a couple things. I'm like, which one do you think seems most like the shoes? And I always like have a couple options that like I would be okay with. But what I try and have in the in this set is something, well, a hand drum that you have to hold and play, something with a mallet, so like a tone block or wood block, something you have to shake um, that's small, so like a, a egg shaker or um, a, any other really kind of shaker, and then something that you have to like jiggle, wiggle, so like a tambourine or uh, sleigh bells or something, and then a big drum like a tubano. I always try and match like something in there or something like that. So that they have a couple different like things that they have to play. And this first day, we just go through the story. We add in the instruments for each part. We retell the story with just the instruments added in. Okay, next lesson they come in. Who's that knocking or tapping at the window? Who's that knocking at the door? Right, we go through that a couple more times. And this time, we do a couple names and then I go, you're never going to believe who was next. And I'm like, so who's that knocking the tapping at the window? Who's that knocking at the door? You know who it was? It was a chicken. I, I know, it was so weird. A chicken was there. But they were just tapping. Well, not with hands or their wings. What do you think they'd be tapping? Yeah, their their beak. It was it was so crazy. And I lead them through animals. And actually I try and do like four or five barnyard animals, and then a farmer comes looking for them. Anyway. That's just like another silly way to extend that. That They are really good at singing it by the time we're done. I actually, when I play it on ukulele, I actually capo up. So with my ukulele capo, I capo up two frets so that instead of it being in C, it's in D. And um, it's way easier to play with the capo um, in D than to play actually in D. So usually I use the capo to just up the key a little bit. And then in the last, um, after do who's that tapping at the window, um, we take the book again, we get the instruments we had before. Um, so like I, the way I do it is I have like a row of kids. So in my seating chart, like the first row gets the first instrument, the next row gets the next instrument, the next row gets the next one. So I have six rows and each of them, which is perfect because there are six characters in here. Um, they each get one of the instruments. So today what we do is we put the instruments back out, we try it, 
and then we rotate. So if they were on a tubano, they go to a hand drum. If they're a hand drum, they go to a wood block or whatever the progression is. And instead of like retelling the story, I just say like, if you're the, if you're the shirt shake twice, or if you're the pants wiggle twice, or if you're whatever. And then sometimes I'll say like, if you're in the blue row, wiggle twice. If you're in the red row, wiggle twice. Or I'll say like, if you're playing an instrument, you have to shake, shake it twice. If you're an instrument, you have to hit, hit it twice. You know, so I just try and break it up and then we rotate again, we rotate again, we rotate again. So each time we do that, we do something different. It's like a different reason of like what, why you have to play or why you have to shake so that like they can get experience with each of the instruments. They play several times for each one. It also reinforces like play, don't play, you know, and some of them are easier. Like the hand drum, if you're just holding it, that's fine. But if you're holding the tambourine or the bells and you're moving, it's making sound. So you gotta be really careful with those so you're not making sound on somebody else's turn. So like it reinforces that like when to play, when not to play, fun and easy to do. But it started with reading this and just adding the actions. And the next day we added instruments and the next day we did a rotation. So now we're all the way done with this book, but it provided that like jumping off point to do all that instrument playing. It was super fun. Okay, woohoo, we're gonna get to second grade. So. I'm gonna go fast. Okay, so when they come in, I say, I know this song about a dog, but I don't think it's the song that you know. But I know this song about a dog. Um, his name was spelled B-I-N-G-O. And some of them start singing. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, so we sing through that version once, right? And I let them like sing it so they can, so they can do it. Because if you say like, I know a song about a dog named Bingo, they're like itching to sing it. So they sing it. Right, and then I say, but actually, no, that's not the version I was gonna teach you today. Hmm. Can you listen to this version and listen for a couple details, some important things about the song? So the song goes, um, there was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name. There was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name. B-I-N-G-O, 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 and bingo was his name. Not name O. There's no O at the end. I don't know where you learned that. Anyway, because like by that point, by the chorus, they're like, and bingo was his name O. They will like inevitably sing that. <laughs> anyway, so what are the details that they usually hear? They usually hear there was a big dog. He was on a back porch. And bingo was his name. So they, they go through and then I teach them the new version. And then they sing the new version. Um, and then there are some actions you could add in. So the first phrase, there was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name. If you're in a big circular shape, you can move left. And then for the next phrase, you move right. Uh, there was a big dog sat on a back porch and bingo was his name. And then B-I-N-G-O, 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 and bingo was his name. I have five little actions. It's in, two, three, four, bout, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, and then you stop. So it's just, if we're in the circle shape, it's go left for eight counts, go right for eight counts, and then in, out, in, out. Simple, easy, but fun, different version of bingo than they're used to. Um, in the, uh, the next thing that we do is we sit down in our seating chart spots. We go back to the, back to the Sydney Opera House and we do one of those videos that I've shared about in the last couple weeks called Who's in the Lift? And in this, uh, series of lessons, um, the first day we meet two ballet dancers. They're very young ballet dancers, like maybe right out of college, maybe still in college, but it's cool because it's a girl and a tutu and a boy. Um, and they both share about what it's like to be ballet dancers. They talk about it. They're a great example. Um, they have the kids do some of the, like the positions. So the five positions, um, they have them do that of your feet positions. So first position, second position, blah, blah, blah. And then they have them do a little bit of ballet. So when that comes up in the video, I have my kids do it. And then, um, it, it's, a, but again, these videos are super short, but that's, it's a super cool one. The ballet one is a really, it's a good one. And the kids always like it. And they like the, the boy in the, the boy ballet dancer is so encouraging to the kids when they do it that like they my kids want to do the, the moves too so anyway cool um and then we learn um this poem or song goes pickle buckle blue bottle fishes in the sea if you want a partner just choose me which is just a so me law version of the famous poem you could do whatever version pickle buckle blue bottle fishes in the sea because there you could set it however you want totally up to you um 
But we learned that, and then I talk about, you know, because in Australia, Australia is, because we were just at Sydney Opera House, right, for the video. In Australia, they're, like, right by the ocean. And there's this, these things in the ocean that are, they look super nice, but actually they're sort of dangerous. And this is, like, a perfect segue because my kids had just learned about jellyfish in their classroom. I don't know why. Life science, I guess. I don't know why it happens in October but anyway they learned about jellyfish and so we sing this song about jellyfish and we talk about a blue bottle it's a kind of a jellyfish it's other in Australia when I studied abroad in Australia they were like blue bottles you watch out for them and I was like okay and then I find out that the other name for blue bottle is the Portuguese man of war <laughs> so anyway you definitely don't want to touch them but it's and I always say to kids like it's so weird that like blue bottle like what a nice name for what a like, dangerous sort of an animal Goodness. And like this song is so happy. Bickle bockle blue bottle fishes in the sea. If you had a partner just to that is not as what? That's like too nice for the animal that like could really hurt you. Anyway, so um they they think that's like sort of a fun dichotomy. Anyway, um then we learn a little poem that goes um as a B section goes like swimming through the water, swimming through the sea jellyfish comes floating by very close to me ouch and we had a little zing at the end so anyway you do that back and forth the singing part and then the poem swimming through the water swimming through the sea jellyfish come floating by very close to me ouch and sometimes we'll do a little tiny jellyfish jellyfish come floating by or whatever just sort of like uh break it up and we just do that as sort of an a and a b uh, the second time they come back for the second lesson of the week, we do bingo. There was a big dog sat on the back porch. We just do basically like a rehash version of it. Like, remember how it goes? Let's do it. And we do it a couple times. Um, and eventually we're going to speed it up, but we just do it a couple times. This time when we go to the Sydney Opera House for that video, Who's in the Lift, we do, there's one about a stage manager. They think that one's sort of interesting. Not as exciting as maybe some of the other ones, but it is. they're definitely still in for it. Um, and I think that the kids that they chose to be in the video, the Opera House chose really special fun kids so even though the stage manager like isn't as like zing exciting as like the percussionist um my kids are still invested in watching it that's also why i put it later in the series this is like number six that they've seen so they're all excited about all the other ones so they're like so excited to watch the video and then they're like mm, even if the content is like not as fascinating as they, as they were used to they still will watch um and then we do bickle bockle blue bottle and this time um we have we get ribbon wands out and um, they get to pair off with partners. And uh, so we do uh, Bickle, Bockle, Blue, Bottle, Fishes in the Sea. If you want a partner, just choose me. And then um, when, we do, when we do that, uh, or the swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, one kid gets to like do a rhythm or a motion with their, their uh, ribbon wand, and the other kid has to match them, has to mirror them. And so I might do it with that poem, like swimming through the water, swimming through the sea, or I might just like play a little chord progression. I, pro I, I think today I did the chord progression. You could do it with the words if you wanted, but the chord progression means that they're not thinking actively about speaking and then also mirroring. So it's a little bit easier to just use that. Then we could use the, the, the poem for like time to rotate from one kid to the other. But anyway, each kid gets a ribbon one and they get to like do a couple things on their own and then we do the mirroring thing um, as like a final th little thing to do for the lesson. Okay, I'm out of time. Um, I'm gonna share more next time. I'll try and maybe hit third grade next time because we're improvising an orf instrument. So I'll see if I can maybe bring that in uh, or bring an orf instrument home next time. Um, okay, I hope these lessons were fun. I hope you got some ideas. Um, I'm gonna be back again next week. But like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're going to go to National AOSA, a National American Orf Schulberg Association National Conference, I hope I'll see you at one of my sessions there. Or if you're at Nebraska Music Educators on November 17th or 18th, I'm doing four sessions there. I hope I'll see you there. Or if you can't leave your state and are not in Nebraska or whatever, um, I'm doing a digital online workshop for Music Construct Ed, and that's on December 6th. If you're interested in any of those, um, details are on my website, and I can, or you send me an email. I can help you. Um, details about that. Okay, cool. I hope I'll see you next time. Uh, thanks so much for coming and spending your Monday night with me. Have a great week, and enjoy having fun with your kids. Bye, everyone.